Greetings! Welcome back to Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about adhesives, a glue that you can make at home. Glues are important, right? Glue, rope, paint. Basic things that you should be using on every homestead. And we're going to be talking about a particular kind of glue. This is hide glue. Okay. Hide glue is a traditional, old school, extremely strong adhesive. Okay. It is when you're joining two organic materials together, hide glue is in the same strength category as epoxy and super glue. Right? It is very, very strong stuff. Right? It is also water soluble. It is non-toxic. It is literally food. We'll get to that in a minute. It is um, readily available. You can make hide glue from a large number of waste products from animal processing that are readily available. I can almost guarantee you have some form of hide glue in your kitchen right now for, from one of the ones that I'm, that I'm going to show you. So it's a resource that you really can't be cut off from, at least not easily. Right? So it's a very available material which is another pro in its favor. Water soluble, easy to clean. It's also being water soluble, it's reversible. So if you make a repair with hide glue and the repair breaks, you can just re-repair it with more hide glue and no problem. That is not true of most modern adhesives, including white glue and yellow wood glue, right? Once you use those, they resist all other adhesives and you cannot glue anything else on top of it. You get one chance and you're done. You can't repair it, right? So it's a fundamentally unrepairable joint. Whereas hide glue, if you glue something up using this material, it's infinitely reversible and repairable, okay? It's only con is that is it is susceptible to weakening with humidity. So things that have been put together using hide glue, the joints will start to wiggle loose over time. This is one area where you get a lot of problems with people repairing furniture that don't know what they're doing, that they'll take a high glue joint, they'll repair it with Elmer's or yellow wood glue, and it'll last for a while longer, but then when it breaks next time, you can't go back and repair it again. Okay? That's not a slight against those adhesives. I love those adhesives. I use them for many, many things. But there's a certain wood joinery where high glue is just simply the correct material. Okay, so we're going to talk about it and then in a, the next video that we're going to film, we're going to repair some antique furniture using the high glue that we're going to make today. So this is a good thing to know. This is one third of a cup of water and it's spilling all over the table. So I'm just going to put it in this bowl there. Self-defense. Okay, now there is... We'll get back to him later, right? There's um, a really wonderful article on natural adhesives, where you can get them, how to process them, and their relative strength, and it includes strength testing and comparisons, okay? It's not a, a, a super scientific strength test that they do, but they do it consistently, and it allows for direct head-to-head -head comparison of many common adhesives. That article is in this book. Okay. The traditional Bowyer's this way? How do I tilt it? Huh? A little bit forward? Can you see? There you go. Awesome. The traditional Bowyer's Bible Volume 1 has a chapter in it about adhesives and it is truly excellent. Even if you have no interest in archery or making archery equipment, I would recommend that you buy this book simply for that chapter, for the chapter on, on adhesives. Because what they say applies not just to bow making, but to all of woodworking and a great many other things as well. So hide glue, what is it? Well, it's broken down collagen. Hide is collagen and elastin, along with glycoproteins and fats and oils, right? So the collagen and elastin, is the majority of the strength, the, it really kind of forms a mesh out of these long protein polymers, right? And that mesh is the strength of hide. This is just a lump of cow raw hide, and this is a little leather belt bag, okay? If you take 
this uh, mesh, this collagen and elastin mesh, and you treat it with cross-linking agents and preservatives, you get leather. Okay, this is preserved collagen and elastin. If you take scraps of collagen and elastin and you cook it at a very low temperature, like very soft simmer, crock pot temperature kind of cooking, for 12 to 24 hours, I'm not joking when I say it takes a long time. And if you cook it too hot, you ruin it. So if you, if you take the collagen source high, cook it for that period of time, it breaks down into smaller subunits, little pieces of the collagen polymer called gelatin. Okay, like I said, high glue is literally food. Now, what you buy as yellow flake high glue from a woodworking supply is not a food grade material, but the material itself is non-toxic and is in your food, right? This is what, if you make bone broth, the thickness and richness of bone broth is literally high glue, okay? Now, the more pure the collagen and the less fats that come along with it, the more boring it is as food, but the better it is as high glue, right? It gets stronger and stronger and stronger like fit literal physical bonding strength increases as you increase in purity of the material. Okay? So the you know old simple and lowest quality source of hide glue is hide. Right? Cook hide, some of it will cook out, the rest of it won't. It comes with a lot of impurities and after 12, 24 hours of cooking at that very low simmer, you throw away the solids and you have your hide glue. But you also have some glycoproteins in there, which you don't want. It weakens it. You have some fats in there, which you don't want. It weakens it. So it's the lowest quality of the natural sources, but it is probably the one that's been used most throughout history. Second natural source is actually bone. Now, you can't just take bone and cook it and efficiently remove the collagen. Bone is a collagen framework that has been mineralized with a calcium phosphate material beta-hydroxyapatite. It dissolves in acids. So if you take bone and you leach it in a strong acid, to do this efficiently you would need to use hydrochloric or sulfuric acid to really leach all of that out. Um, but you could do it on a small chicken wing type, or chicken wishbone I should say, with vinegar. And then you would be left with the flexible collagen matrix, which you then could cook down into high glue. You would get a very clean high glue from that, but it's a whole lot of work and not definitely not worth the effort. These are just some bone holes that I had a while back. So I'm going to kind of put that. It, it, it will give you a higher purity gelatin than actual hide, but it's still kind of on that same lower tier because of the work involved, right, and the time involved. Next up is sinew. This is the sinew rope that I've made for another project. You will see this again in upcoming videos. Sinew is almost pure collagen. So it will cook into a very, very strong, very pure hide glue. Okay? So when you're processing sinew that way, you get waste. You can save this waste and make natural hide glue out of it. Okay? Um, what you cannot make hide glue out of are hooves, horns, hair, and silk. It is not a type of protein that will break down into gelatin. So if you hear stories about taking feet and cooking them into hide glue, it's actually the tendons attached to the feet that they're using, not the actual hoof material that's worthless. You can string them for a rattle if you want, that's the only useful thing to do with a hoof. Okay. So that's the next tier up. And then a tier above that, even pure, lower in fats and contaminants, is the swim bladder of a fish. I don't have one of those to show you, but if you're a fisherman, you could save swim bladders if you want to make some very, very clean hide glue and make it yourself. Okay? And then the top tier source of ultra pure gelatin is ultra pure gelatin. <laughs> right? We live in the 21st century. Almost said 20th. We live in the 21st century. You can go to the store and you can buy pure gelatin. And this stuff is purer and will make a stronger hide glue than any of these. It is also purer and will make a stronger hide glue than the yellow flake hide glue you would buy as a woodworking material. So this 
simple product that you can get at any corner market will give you a superior glue bond to any of the things actually sold as high glue. Okay. Now the last thing that you can get in modern time is high glue that is a prepared liquid product. Those have stabilizers in them that maintain it as a liquid at room temperature. So again, it's a little less pure. I've never used them. I'm not going to comment on them further, but it is less pure than this stuff. Of all of the high glues on the market, the testing that I've seen, and again, you can get some of that testing here in the traditional Bowyer's Bible, all say that this simple, unflavored cooking gelatin is the top tier high glue. Okay? So how do we make it? Well, we start with this one third cup of a water. We open up, we pull out a pack, and we use one pack of gelatin per third cup of water. Dump her right in there. We stir it up. And the first thing you will notice is that it ain't going to dissolve. It's just going to get clumpy. Okay? This is the downside and the thing that people don't like about using actual hide glue. Is this thing that it, it's, it's mixed in, it's clumped. You might be able to see some clumps sticking to the spoon, but it's not dissolving. We need heat. Hide glue requires heat. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this on this warm soapstone. Look for these. If you have a consistent heat source in winter, Look for these soap stones. They used to use them in the old days for putting in, in beds to warm up the bed. But if you put anything on a soap stone like this, you're basically doing the exact same thing as putting it in a crock pot. It, um, in the old days, it was traditional amongst many Native American cultures to carve soap stone bowls to cook it. Because you could put the bowl right in the fire and then cook your food in the bowl as though it's a crock. Ceramic materials will not do that, and other stone will not do that. Only, um, only the ultramafic, metamorphosized ultramafic materials have this impact, and that's your soapstone, talc. Asbestos is in the same chemical family, but structurally completely different from talc and soapstone. And jade. So you could make a jade bowl and have the same impact, but you're richer than I am if you do that. You're probably not watching this YouTube channel. So um, <laughs> go for it if you want. If you live near a jade source, go for it. But uh, these soapstones show up in antique shops all the time, and I buy them any, t any chance I can get because they're very useful things. So putting this gelatin right in this little metal bowl on top of the soapstone, is exactly equivalent to putting it in a crock pot. It will warm my glue for my next project this afternoon. And that is how you make, make high glue the not two day long process modern way. But if you can't get your hands for whatever reason, your, your store shut down or closed or um, the supply chain issues have gotten just that bad, you have all of these other sources. And you can boil it out, put it on a flat pan, dry it down into flakes, and then save it in its dry form. And it will save just as well as rawhide. Because guess what? It's just flaked up rawhide. Okay? So that's the hide glue story. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll go ahead and give it a like if you found it useful. And I will see you next time on the Old Ways Rising Farm channel.